Good morning, welcome to Grove Knits. I'm Rebecca and for my new viewers, welcome, it's great to see you. This is a podcast where I talk about uh, any knitting that I've been doing throughout the last week to sometimes three weeks, um, any spinning, any other things that relate in any way, shape or form to yarn and crafting because I tend to span over a lot of bits and pieces. Um, and for my returning viewers, thank you so much. Um, welcome back and we're about to get into it. So let's start by what I'm actually wearing today. We are almost in November in Australia and it's while I live in Victoria where it's a little bit cooler, it's normally a bit warmer than it is at the moment. Um, I think we're hitting a maximum of 18 today, which is uh, still cool enough to wear a sweater anyway. So this morning I'm actually wearing, it's an old, a sweater I finished back in April 2019 and it's the Arboreal sweater or Arboreal, not sure how to pronounce it, by Jennifer Steingass. So this is knit with Bendigo Woolen Mills Stella range which is a bamboo wool split 50-50. So it's actually drapes a little bit differently and it's not as warm while it is in eight ply or DK weight um, so it's relatively thick it's not over it's not an overheating sweater now as for finished objects this week I'm just going to insert some video here of me talking about the flax light sweater that I have knit for one of my nephews um, and there's also the update there for uh, the other flax light by tin can knit sweater that I'm knitting these are Christmas knits for my niece Ariel so David's was in a size 6 to 8 and Ariel's is in a size 8 to 10 um, so here's that footage so I have finished off in this last week my flax light sweater for one of my nephews for Christmas um, I spoke about that in the last episode I'm doing a bunch of Christmas knitting and trying to get those done. So this is the Flax Light. And this is knit in Bendigo Woolen Mills fingering weight yarn. It's 100% machine washable wool. So it's got the pearl bumps down the sleeves. This has been washed and blocked. So that is in a size uh, 6 to 8. And then the sleeves and the body are done with David's measurements which are pretty much the pattern give or take an inch and then I've cast on Ariel's this is my niece now her flax light sweater so these guys are brother and sister David wants the green Ariel wants the blue so this is in Bendigo Woolen Mills blue denim in the luxury range fingering four ply again and I'm about five inches down. I've got two more increase rows to do. So they're the increase rows for the sleeve and the front or back. This sweater is knit exactly the same front or back, so that makes life a bit easier for kids. So you're about five inches in, we can go from there. So they're the two flax lights by Tin Can Knits in a nice green and in the denim blue, both for Christmas hits. Now as for my work in progresses, um, obviously I've got the flax light by Tin Can Knits for Ariel, but this is my Beach Days shawl by Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls podcast. So that's where I'm up to now. So it's going quite nicely, quite well. So there we go. However, this is taking a little bit of a back seat at the moment while I work on uh, Christmas knits and other items. So I've gone from so I've gone from having one or two projects on the go to actually having quite a few at the moment because it's just that time of year. And that's just in a lovely project bag that I bought on Etsy by Skainline Studio. It's a nice deep one. It actually even fits a nice sweater quantity in it. What I particularly like about it is the zipper doesn't stick and it's a fine, fine, uh, the zipper's got fine teeth. 
so there's no ability for yarn to catch either. Okay, other works in progress. So these are, this is another cloth. I'm doing some in, this is a Bendigo Woolen Mills uh, Snow, which is 100% cotton, um, just in a snow color, so it's just white. So I'm doing some white dishcloths at the moment, or face washes. Again, they're knit on the bias to 60 stitches. I've just started, I think I've got one row before I decrease, or if I started the decreases, I'm not sure. Um, at the moment, these have replaced my sock knitting because these are quite easy to carry in my bag with me everywhere I go. So whenever I'm waiting, it's the cloths that I pull out and knit on. So I thought I'd actually knit up a whole heap of white ones to add in to the brights that I've got as gifts for people, just to balance those out. Um, and if they're anything like my mother, my mother prefers white cleaning items because she can then bleach them and, and do whatever she wants without them staining. And she likes that clean look of stark white, I'm guessing. Now, other works in progress. I'm working on some dog sweaters that I'm actually putting in my Etsy store, which will be linked down below. That's Grove Knits. So I've started with a basic dog sweater for a miniature dash hound, which I knitted. I'll insert a photo here um, for my daughter's miniature dash hound. I need to do a larger size. So I'm going to do some Christmas colours. But I was also thinking of adding to my patterns. This is an old beanie that I knitted out of a, out of a hand spun. And I've done those baubles on it. Now there, I haven't knitted those. I've done those by carrying a crochet hook as I knit through and then doing the wrapping um, with the crochet hook. So I was thinking of adding some of these baubles to my dog sweater patterns. Um, and I was thinking for this current one of actually doing it in some Christmassy colours. But we'll see how that goes. I'm casting that on today and just going to play around with the pattern with Cheddar's new measurement sizes and go from there. Um, the beauty is that dog sweaters, especially ones for miniature dash hounds, knit up particularly quickly. Uh, so they're a fun item to play around with patterning on. Now my next work in progress is my Party of Five sweater by Knitterella. I've knit down the neck and started on, I'm up to the second colour change. So I'm just gonna pop that on. Well, if I wasn't feeling warm before, I'm starting to feel warm now. So this, um, gee, it's actually been quite a fun, fun little knit. The neck's quite loose. So I've decided to go with the turtleneck. Um, around, along the back, I don't know if you'll be able to see, there was short row shaping. Hopefully you can see some of that. That uh, stitch marker just denotes where the back is. So there was short row shaping in the back. You can see that there's a bit of a um, line difference here between the two there. That was, I'm not really a swatcher. So what I tend to do is knit a few rows and then take my gauge measurements and sort of check gauge as I go, um, which has its positives and negatives. I do keep track of, because I mostly use Bendigo Woolen Mills yarns, I do keep track of what my gauge is with those particular yarns because it doesn't tend to change much since I'm staying with the same type of yarn. Generally with an 8-ply, this jumper pattern requires a 20-stitch gauge. I normally get, with 8-ply yarn or DK weight yarn, Bendigo Woolen Mills, 21 stitches with 45 millimeter needles. Um, and with four mil needles, I'd normally get 22 to 23. So I went to the um, four and a half mil needles, but I was then getting a gauge of 18 stitches. So obviously my knitting gauge has changed. Um, so I've actually, that line was where I've dropped down to the coffee machine. We'll just wait for that to finish off. Cheers. So I was going to pull it back, but I actually don't mind it. The other thing I've noticed is part of this line is that the pattern called for a make one left. Um, and there must be just, I obviously do something wrong in my make one left stitches. Make one right are invisible in the way that I knit. 
but my Make One Lefts are not invisible. Every single time I do a Make One Left, I recheck my notes on Making One Left, Making One Right. This time I also quickly jumped on YouTube, had a quick squiz at Make One Left. So I was doing it the way you meant to do it. But for me, obviously there's just something that I do that makes it not be invisible. So that's the only row of Make One Lefts that I've done. The rest of my increases are all with Make One Rights and they are invisible. So I think I'll take the hint and just stick to that. So anyway, so this is how the party top is knitting up. Obviously I've still got ends out everywhere. So this will be quite nice. I'm actually quite liking this pearl bump detail. Uh, one other mistake here that I've made that I'm not overly concerned about is some of the smaller balls of yarn that I'm using, since I can use just up some scraps, this lime green, I didn't have the label on it. I know that it's a Bendigo Woolen Mills 100% wool. Um, and I thought it looked a little bit thicker than some of the 8-ply DK weight. But as we know, that DK weight 8-ply range can vary a little bit. Um, but it turns out, from looking at it, it's obviously a 10-ply. Oh well, it doesn't really matter, it's only one stripe. But that has given that a slightly thicker look here. But again, excuse me, again, once this blocks out, I don't really think you'll notice it. So this is my party of five top. I'm loving this pink. Pink isn't something, pink is the colour that I've always loved and love to wear, but I don't have a lot of pink. So I'm quite pleased to have such a, it's a petal pink. Um, and this is also the pink is, this is a limited edition yarn by Bendigo Woolen Mills, which is a wool alpaca silk blend. So it should have, well it feels, it really feels lovely and it was really nice to knit with as well. But it's got a nice softness to it. Uh, this one is quite rustic. Not that you'd know by the colour, that's such a fabulously bright colour. Anyway, so that's the Party of Five Top by Knitterella. Don't know if you can see, but I've, my little progress keeper there is a little, well he doesn't want to hang around, see, it's a little skull. I bought a little packet of stitch markers for Halloween, not that I celebrate Halloween. Um, but all I could find in Australia was just some little skulls. I was hoping to get some great pumpkins and other thematic ones. So in this last week I've had no movement at all with my sock knitting, but that's because I've been working on a fair bit of other bits and pieces. So now on to some dyeing that I'm hoping to get done shortly. So I have five skeins of undyed yarn. These are all Benigo Woolen Mills Fine Merino Sock Yarn. They're in an 80-20 split, so 80% wool, 20% nylon. And what I'm wanting to do with these is I have some turquoise and some rubine. Let me just throw there. So I like to so I like to play around with some dyeing, um, but for me it's only ever been with natural dyes from the plants and the, the like outside, um, or with some food colouring dyeing. So I've, I did a pair of socks a while back um, with some green and orange food colouring mild through. So I'm actually after some particularly vibrant colours to do with this yarn, to actually, with the five skeins, um, it's a good, well, it's more than a sweater quantity. I should get a sweater, a hat, potentially a pair of socks, maybe some mittens as well out of them. So what I'm just trying to figure out at the moment, I'll get some uh, cloth, even though I won't dye it the same, and just play around with a little bit. I'm really hoping I can get some bright turquoise and some bright rubine, and also then do some with... Uh, some blending of the two through them to actually get some striping going. So we'll see how that goes. I hope to play around with that at some point during this week or next weekend. I may not get too much done next weekend because we're off to see Wicked, the musical at our local theatre. Some other items that I'm planning on working on 
today is I've got my wheel out and ready and oiled up again and I'm actually going to start spinning this ready spin from Benny Oil Mills. This is in a, no, I was about to say storm cloud, snow cloud colour range. Um, so it's a nice deep grey. So my plan is to spin this to about a fingering, a light fingering weight four ply yarn as a single ply. And then on the other bobbins, these are from the Nundal Woolen Mill, which is actually a New South Wales woolen mill, which is the state above Victoria. Um, he was at a recent fibre show that I went to, and there's no colourway on these, so it's just a nice orange, a nice lilac -y pink, and a blue. So my plan is to spin these through. They are... Here's the sound. They are so soft. They are absolutely like a cloud. I can't wait to spin them through. So my plan is to spin these colours um, through to blend them and then use those as the second ply. Oops, so the wrong way. Use those as the second ply and ply them with this snow cloud. So my hope is to actually get a nice dark base uh, for the for whatever I want to knit up with these colours mulled through it. And I also happen to have from the wool stash in Malden this lovely purple, this is in Corridale though, so the rest of this yarn, this fibre sorry, is all in a fine merino. So I'm not sure I should blend the Corridale with it. Um, my understanding, I haven't actually spun with Corridale before. My understanding, how about I open it, is that it's a bit stickier. Oh wow, that is really sticky. Okay, I can see why it's considered stickier. So I will still, I imagine, pop some Corridale. Either way, I'm going to spin up the Corridale anyway, and I'll decide, I can't believe how different that feels. <laughs> When I first bought my spinning wheel, oh, it was recommended that I spin with Corridol because of how sticky it is and how much easier it is. And I had, because of that stickiness, and I had thought, um, and I know it's rather silly, I, I had thought, as you, if you've watched some of my previous videos, that I would spin with cheap and nasty stuff. I apologise, it actually isn't nasty stuff. It was still perfectly fine. But just with some cheaper fibre that I, I got as offcuts it wouldn't actually normally be for spinning um, and my logic was if I could learn to spin that and spin that well then I could actually spin anything and spin it quite well so that's paid off for me I've actually there's been some frustration but nothing that I couldn't overcome um, and my spinning is now getting a lot more consistent because of that um, so yeah having said that had I started with the Corridor, I don't know, well maybe I wouldn't be able to problem solve so well had I started with something that's actually great for beginner spinners. But either way, I don't regret it because I feel that I'm actually a better spinner and can problem solve uh, dealing with dramas that are cropping up through the fibre as I spin, as opposed to a nice, easy, sticky long draft. Because that's that was one of the bigger issues that I've had with the fibre that I chose to spin is when I started I didn't really know much more about um, staple length of the fibres and the effect that that has as it's spinning through. It's huge. Um, and this Corridor has a nice long staple length through the look of it. So a good two to three inches. Just having a look. Oh, Chia pulls out beautifully. Or drafts beautifully anyway let me pop that back in so my plan is to spin up the brights that i've got and then ply it with this snow cloud this is 738 grams this is going to be a lot of yarn a lot of yarn all right so what am i stalking at the moment so 
at the moment I'm looking at doing some Christmas type stockings um, I'm just having a, a look through various patterns when my kids were little because I was uh, doing a lot of quilting at that time I actually made them some great Christmas sacks and did some great applique of Santas on them and their names are across the top and that type of thing so what I would actually like to do is do some knitted stockings but actually do some nice heritage looking stockings with some names on them what I thought I might do is start I don't have any grandchildren coming through with yet so what I thought I might do is start by doing some for nieces and nephews and playing around with some patterns and figuring out what looks great what lasts what works um, and working through from there so I, at the moment I'm stalking Christmas stockings and from there I went down the rabbit hole and started looking at these great little snowmen and little reindeer and some little Santas and Christmas ornaments and it was just a massive rabbit hole however I'm having fun in that rabbit hole so we'll see what eventuates there one of the other things that I'm currently stalking and intend to cast on any day is Mm, I should actually quickly look up what the pattern's called. It's the it's a it's a bandana cowl and hat. But just to talk a bit about my reasons, it was a pattern that actually came out on Ravelry. I think I saw it maybe a year ago. It's the first time I saw it, and I instantly piqued my interest. I loved it because, especially when my hair was longer, I often wore bandanas because it was just an easy way to keep my hair out of my face and. Um, being of Ukrainian heritage, uh, headscarves are something that we often wear. Um, so I quite liked that bandana. And then I probably forgot about it until last weekend and throughout this week watching Rhinebeck footage. So I follow Christy Glass Knits. Uh, she's a YouTube podcaster as well. And I particularly like watching her Rhinebeck footage because she does a uh, show me, tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater. So part of that Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck sweater was a whole montage of people with this bandana hat on as well. So it then refocused me on the fact that as soon as I saw that, I thought, oh my goodness, I meant to actually have a look at that about a year ago. It's now back in my head, so I want to quickly, I want to find the pattern and actually get that cast on. I saw it in some great colours, so that is something that I'm going to be stalking as well. One other item I'd like to cast on, it's not going to be this week, it's hopefully in the next month or so, and this is going to be a slow knit. You right, Idaho? Yes. By slow knit, I mean something that is just simply going to be that pure relaxation knitting. Whenever I pick it up, I don't mind if it takes me. Hello, my love. Idaho's just come to say hi. Yes, hello. I don't mind if it takes me a year or even two years to knit. Now, I actually don't like the picture of this one. I think my issue with it is the way that they've styled this magazine. But that sweater that's in this magazine, thanks to uh, watching Rhinebeck footage of what people are wearing and that type of thing, I have seen this sweater knit up in some alternate colours and in some alternate ways. So. There was one lady on the on the Christy Glass Knits pod, uh, coverage who had it as a nice fitted sweater. She had a cropped. I'm too old to wear crop. That's not going to happen. Um, so it'd be I have mine at, at mid hip. Is what I should do is just take a quick picture of him here and insert it so you can see. Hey Idaho, what you doing, gorgeous? Hey, yes, we love you. So anyway, we'll just run through some of that footage. Um, so I saw this cast on and it was just amazing. So when this magazine came out, I really didn't like it because I, I think it's just the way that they've styled it. While it's, I appreciated it for the artistic side of it, but see, I don't, I don't actually like the, the puffiness on the sleeves down there. Um, and I felt it looked a bit armor-like. However, seeing it in some alternate colors um, and with alternate sleeves, I'm thinking, and so I suppose maybe the big part is that our tastes change over time as well. 
But again, seeing it with alternate sleeves and in alternate colours just drove home how beautiful it is. And what I do like about it and about some other sweaters that I'm seeing around in this in this vein is this idea of doing some real artistic cabling in the same colour and actually having that depth show. So I'm thinking something like this would actually be an heirloom knit. Um, so I will, this will require some special yarns that I know unequivocally it is going to last. I'm guessing I would probably use something that is um, a rustic yarn that is uh, non superwash so it's got a nice stickiness to it um, and shows that design really well. So I need to find the right yarn because something like this is going to take a long time to knit um, and again will be an heirloom knit so it's worth that investment in the yarn for something like this I think. So yeah, so I, where I wasn't considering that at all, I'm actually thinking about having a run of that sweater. So we'll see how that goes. Or if not that particular one, one in that vein. What I will say is, I would love to be able to actually stop working full time and actually dedicate some, even just a, a couple of days a week to my yarn crafts, to my Etsy shop and actually start doing something with that instead of just cramming it into my spare hours so um, anyway that's just one of those dreams that it's nice to have um, there's part of me that thinks that at my age you just simply can't do that type of thing but i suppose i really shouldn't think that way because if anything now is the perfect age to actually embrace the life and do some of this stuff because the kids are older and moving out and we actually can start to focus more on ourselves a bit more at least until grandchildren start coming. I've had the Etsy store up for a little while but it would also be fantastic to actually make a try and make a go of it and turn it into something other than at the moment I've just been using it to move along excess knitting that I do um, between that and doing some charity knits and forwarding those on to to others that have the need. Um, it'd just be nice to give it a go. Anyway, and I think that's about everything for now. So thank you very much for joining me. And I have a long list of things to get on with. Anyway, thank you very much again. I hope you have a lovely, lovely next couple of weeks. So if you like the video, please like and subscribe. That would be fantastic. Thanks again.